Hello everyone and welcome to this mini lecture on five bits of advice about an educated life. Uh, this is not a required video for the course, however it is, uh, well, advice and thoughts that I provide for my students to think about as they move forward in their education. So let's begin. The first thing I would tell any and all students, and not just because this may be a literature course or uh, some other course that requires a lot of reading, is read a lot. There's probably no better b piece of advice I can give students for trying to enrich their lives and open up potential opportunities for uh, just better experiences throughout their life. And the reason being is that reading has been one of the major glues of certainly modern society, but just the actual act of writing and reading has been what has catapulted our society or our, our, our human culture uh, over millennia. And reading is, is such a powerful act. And when I say reading, I don't mean you have to necessarily be reading extremely hard and complicated texts just read anything. Just make sure you read a lot. Uh, I can't emphasize that enough and you know you'll probably hear me say it at some point in the course that I do read a lot and part of what I read is actually audiobooks so I listen to a lot of books um, as opposed to actually read with my eyes. I, I read with my ears a lot. I can't encourage you enough to just make sure you dedicate a good portion of your activities to reading. It can improve a lot or give you opportunity and access to a lot of things in not so direct ways. And I think that's the important thing to remember. I can't give you an equation of saying if you read X amount it will give you this return. I can just say that reading, or I've yet to meet anybody in my life who reading hasn't benefited in some way, big or small. Two, I would say continue to learn never, never stop. Um, always find ways to engage your brain. And this, re this learning can take on many different forms, but just always look to engage your brain. Again, I've never met anybody who hasn't benefited from this, and I think it's important to realize that you are constantly learning, but in a passive way or in a kind of de facto way, but to actually seek out new things to understand and appreciate and to make sense of. Uh, it is, it's a very ex extremely useful tool to have to say I'm continuing to develop and improve myself um, and it helps you know again in, in the professional world to say look yes you know I've had this formal education but I've also gone on and, and learned these other things. On a personal level it can enrich your life and it can also help m maintain a certain amount of mental acuity as you move into your later life and it's shown that you know people who can continue to engage in mental activities, continue to challenge themselves, are people who, you know, who are able to hold on to certain things as they move into their older years. Um, so, fail and fail often, but learn from your failures. And what I have here for an image is, of course, a video game. Because I think the video game, you know, people give video games a lot of bad rep, but I think they're the perfect representation of what we sometimes forget. Failure for many is, is shameful. We hate to admit that we failed, right? In our culture, we don't really do well with failure. Um, in fact, you know, if we look at reality TV and kind of how, you know, we prize the winner, but often ignore the failures or forget who the people are that didn't win uh, whatever the, the reality show was and the like. But failure is not a bad thing. And video games always remind me of that. In fact, it's part of the reason why I play video games is that so long as you're thinking about how and why you failed, it's not necessarily failure or it's failure, but that's okay. Failure is bound to happen. None of us are perfect. None of us, you know, come into this world fully fledged, knowing everything and being able to do everything. So, 
video games help remind me of that is that how many times have you played a game and it could be any video game it can be a first person shooter you know or it could be angry birds right it could be words with friends it could be super mario brothers and you die and you die and you die within the game and of course you keep playing right you don't say forget it this game is dumb i'm done but you keep playing and failure at that point isn't a bad thing it's a hmm I need to rethink this, I need to re-strategize, I need to figure something better out. So I think video games are, are a perfect analogy for how to think about failure. They're not an end to it, they're more like, okay, that didn't work, so what can I do to make it work? Um, so don't be afraid of failure, don't be afraid about failing, be okay with failing and learning from it. And that's the big thing about about any kind of any area in life where you may have failed is you failed if you've decided to stop or if you've decided not to learn where you went wrong. So life is not fair but that doesn't negate you trying. I have amazing students who come into my classroom whose life in many ways has not been considered fair. Uh, at least fair in contrast to other people's lives and the opportunities and privileges afforded them. But the important thing isn't about whether it's fair or not. It's about whether you try and what do you do, right? So. Yes, the, you're going to be in many situations in your life that are considered unfair. Everybody does to some degree or other. The question is not whether it's going to be fair or not, but whether despite that, you can still try. You can still attempt to do what it is you need to do. So in a course like in a course like mine, some of the things that we cover, yes, other students may have had more, may have more knowledge about it, may have more experience, but that doesn't mean their, you know, their knowledge or their experience should prevent you from trying, should prevent you from engaging. And this is true of all your courses: is that you'll have your peers that may have more knowledge and experience. So what? You are here in this course. You've earned your way here you know, you should still be giving it your effort and not being, not worrying about whether the playing field is level. Give respect and worry little about getting respect. Um, you know, this is, this I think is important, again, throughout your life, throughout education, throughout just, you know, how you move about, um, I, I'm always of the disposition to respect people um, and to give them whatever respect I, I understand is giving respect in, in that context. And I don't often worry about getting respect. And the big piece of this to remember and to think about is if you have self-respect, if you respect and care about yourself, then you don't necessarily need other people's respect. Right? You don't need to worry about whether somebody else respects you because the most important person to respect you is yourself. So what I would say is always be willing to be respectful to other people um, and don't get lost or mixed up in the idea about getting respect or other people being respectful for you. And, you know, there's a, there's a far cry between you know, making sure people give you respect and not being trounced upon or, you know, being insulted or, or things like that. But really, you know, if you have that element of self-respect, if you appreciate and understand and, and care for yourself, then getting respect from others is not really as relevant. Giving respect to others, I find, you know, very quickly... Um, allows for a lot of great opportunities and you know respect is a is a is a loaded word in a lot of ways um, and I would recommend kind of having a much more broader term of it of just being sure that you in the presence of others especially people you don't know you do you know you do well to you know pay attention to them to you know use um, 
use appropriate language and use appropriate gestures and those kind of things to um, not necessarily make other people either feel like they're being disrespected, disrespected or uncomfortable or the like. So just three final comments um, as we end this mini lecture. Um, it's important to remember that all learning is the opportunity for self-learning and basically what I mean by that is anytime you're learning something there's some ways in which that is a good reflection or something you can apply to yourself and learn more about yourself. Um, and this gets into the idea of meta-learning and learning about how you learn, um, which might be a little too heady for this mini-lecture, but it's worth just noting that any learning, there's an opportunity for you to learn about yourself. Um, we often think we know ourselves best, but there, even if that is true, there's a lot of things we don't know about ourselves because we can't get outside of our head, right? We can't get outside of our body, and so learning it gives us an opportunity possibly to do that. Uh, Learning is not a destination, but a journey. Uh, that is, you know, in this culture, in this day and age, with everything that's going on, so many things change, so many things are evolving. I mean, just the idea that, you know, there are, there's, there are jobs right now that nobody would have known about, or, or there was no understanding of 10 years ago, um, especially as we look at social media and where it's gone. Or as we look at biotechnology and where that's gone. So understand that you should be constantly learning and preparing for these different paths along that journey. I think as you go out into the world, as you graduate from North, from North Shore Community College or wherever you're at, um, you need to really be thinking about how to be creators, makers, doers, thinkers, and questioners. Um, it's it is one of the only ways to keep up with a changing world in that it's not enough to say okay I've gotten this degree and I'm going to be this particular thing um, I would encourage you not to be entirely static with your life not to say okay this is it this is all this is what I'm aspiring to really push yourself to continue to take in new ideas new ways of understanding the world and uh, be ready for change, uh, or to be changing, be constantly changing with what's going on in the world. Alright, that's all I have for now. Thank you very much for listening, and see you in the next lecture.